This is how I make my El Ruderai yogurt without a yogurt maker, a sous vide, or even an Instapot. I'm using yogurt from this previous batch as my starter, so I will not be using the BioGaia tablets. Use them only if you do not have two tablespoons of El Ruderai yogurt from a previous batch. So I use my heating pad since it doesn't automatically shut off and the temperature maintains 99 degrees. It's a simple one. It comes with a cloth cover, which I use underneath to protect the surface of my countertop. I use the low setting for the fermentation process. Here, I set my 10 inch glass bowl on top of the heating pad and set an eight inch bowl inside of it. I put the ingredients into the eight inch bowl and later I'll pour water into the 10 inch bowl. Warm water will be used for the fermentation process. Other ingredients I use include organic, ultra pasteurized half and half and organic inulin, a prebiotic fiber. Here's my tablespoon and my little whisk. Now to get started, I've added two tablespoons of my previous batch of El Ruderai yogurt and two tablespoons of inulin powder to my eight inch bowl. This is my previous batch, which is almost gone. So just remember to put aside two tablespoons of your yogurt once you make it before you dig in. Also, I thoroughly clean and rinse my dishes with hot water and I sterilize my whisk because they're known to hide food particles. Here, I'm adding some of the half and half to the ingredients, just enough to get them combined. You could also dissolve the inulin powder in a small bowl with some half and half, then pour the mixture into the bigger bowl. I added this amount so that I can see and know when the lumps have dissolved. And once the ingredients are combined, I add the remaining half and half and mix everything together. It doesn't have to be perfect and it won't take as much time as I did here. It'll be pretty quick once you get the hang of it. I actually forgot to turn my heating pad on. I usually preheat it while I'm preparing. So I turned it on high for a few minutes and then low for the duration of the 36 hours. I advise you to test your heating device overnight. Periodically check the temperature or just check it in the morning when you get up and just make sure it will maintain the 99 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that the outside temperature affects your room temperature as well. So here, all 32 ounces of half and half have been poured. Once I'm done mixing, I cover the mixture and pour water into the 10 inch bowl. I use the water to control the temperature of the mixture, which should be between 99 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If your water is too hot, just add a splash of cool water to bring the temperature down. The water level should be at or just above your yogurt mixture. I check my water temperature pretty frequently for at least the first 30 minutes or so. My temperature is just a little bit off, so I'm adding some hot water from my sink. When I'm pretty sure my temperature is remaining steady between 99 and 100 degrees, I allow it to ferment for a full 36 hours. 
Sometimes the temperature will drop, especially at night. And in this case, I'll simply fold one of my kitchen towels and wrap it around the base of the glass dish. So after it ferments for 36 hours, it's fine to uncover and take a look if you'd like. However, it does need to be refrigerated for at least three hours before you eat it. You can strain it for a few hours if you like a thicker Greek style yogurt. Otherwise, enjoy. Thank you for watching.